What's up, everybody? Welcome to Graceway Online. We are so glad that you're here today. Joining us on demand is awesome, but did you know that we go live every Sunday at 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Central Standard Time? Every Sunday, our online host team is available to chat and pray with you. To join us live, go to live.visitgraceway.org or catch us on Facebook. It looks like the experience is starting right now, so let's get ready for Graceway Online. Worship and Wisdom. It's actually a four series set. We are in number three. The first was Ancestors, teaching through the Old Testament, Genesis to Deuteronomy. Then we did Kings and Judges, Judges all the way through Esther. And now we're in this, this set of four books, my favorite books in the Bible, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, and Ecclesiastes. And I'm just going to ask you again, as I have, I've had some of you text me or email me, to join me on just a, a, a regular practice that I have to read five psalms and one proverb every single day. If you do that every single day, you'll read through both books 12 times a year. If you don't have a Bible, you can go out to the Next Steps desk. We'll give you one. But I want you to get connected to what God has to say to us. In this book of Proverbs, I want you to go to Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7. And I want to show you why God says that this book is so important. And then we're going to dive into it. And I hope that it will be a blessing to you. Here it is. Proverbs 4 and verse 7 says this. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. And whatever you get, get insight. God says, if there's anything that you should be focused on getting a hold of, it's wisdom. Because if you get wisdom, you'll get insight. And so when you read through the book of Proverbs, if you go Proverbs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... Proverbs makes a case for wisdom. She's a woman, and every woman in the house said, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> She's a woman, and we're introduced to wisdom. We're introduced to the eternality of wisdom. We're introduced to the source of wisdom, and we're introduced to the incentive that we should have to go and have a relationship with wisdom. When you look at Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7, that word insight means skilled living. Skilled living. It's not simply knowledge. It's applied knowledge. There's a very big difference on this, and this is something that's very important for us in the church, because you can read your Bible and accumulate information, but you can't get wise if you don't walk with God. I know lots of Christians who know their Bible, but they don't walk with God. Because they don't understand that there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. I read one guy, he said, knowledge is understanding that a journey is 12 miles long. I know that it's 12 miles long. Wisdom is knowing how to pack. Insight is having a lemonade stand built on mile six. <laughs> right? this, this, is what, this is what God is saying. If you could get anything, he doesn't say get knowledge. He says, understand what it means to take what you know and apply it with a skill set that is for your blessing and God's glory and the joy of those around you. And I think that we're living in a time right now that we have access to more information than ever. Listen, you don't even have to Google it. You hit a button and you say, Siri, what happened on January 14th, 1978? Bang. Knowledge is not a problem for us. Wisdom? Wisdom's a problem for us. This idea of how do I take what I know, how do I take what I've experienced and apply it to my life with skill so that God is glorified, that my life and those around me are blessed. And so Proverbs introduces us to four types of people. The people of Proverbs is what it says on your guide. The people of Proverbs, and I want to introduce them to you just to kind of help you get your bearings on it. The first person that we're introduced to is referred to as the simple 15 different times in the book of Proverbs, the simple is introduced to us. Now, some of these terms that we're going to use are maybe going to feel a little like, what? How are you going to call me that? Okay, let me just be clear with you. All of us have one of or all four of these people in our lives somewhere. Does that make sense to you? 
And so I want to introduce them to you so that you can see them in yourself and so that you can see them in those around you so that you can be growing around it. So uh, the, the simple is, is somebody who's not wise just simply because they don't know any better. They're not wise simply because they don't know any better. And in Proverbs chapter four and verse, or chapter seven and verse seven, uh, we see the connection most often in the book of Proverbs. And it says this, I have seen among the simple, I have perceived among the, among the youths, a young man lacking sense. Come on, somebody with a lacking sense, right? Simplicity in the Bible, not minimalism, but a simple-minded person is not somebody who is foolish or, or mocking or any of those things, just somebody that just doesn't know. I have a buddy who pastored a church in Manila in the Philippines, and, and there was this day that he uh, was trying to kind of gather some people around some things, and he, and he called over to one of his leaders. He said, hey, hey, you know, come, come over here, right? And they, and he's, Serious, no, come on, seriously, what? I need you to come over here. Oh, pastor, no. What? What's the problem? Come over here. Pastor, no, no, pastor. He's like, what? what is going on? He's getting frustrated, right? And finally, someone comes alongside him and says, pastor, I think the, the, uh, the hand gesture that you used in the United States uh, that is the same as what you just did is the raising of the middle finger. Oh, <laughs> and so he's getting frustrated and vehemently flipping them the bird. He just, he just didn't know. He, he didn't know. And, and, and so uh, all of us have some place in our life where uh, we just don't know. We just, we just don't know. And the solution for the simple-minded is just time and experience. It's just time and experience. I, just, I need to have some experiences. I need to have... Some, some life in front of me, and I need feedback. I need feedback. Uh, if, if, if my friend, Pastor Jim, had not had somebody come alongside and say, I think the hand gesture that is uh, like that in the United States for you, he would have just kept, <laughs> and he would have destroyed his testimony and, in term, and, and eventually his church, not out of sin, not out of rebelliousness, just out of he, he just didn't know. And so thir 15 times, Proverbs introduces us to someone that's simple. Uh, the, the next is the fool. It's the fool. And this shows up 64 times in the book of Proverbs. And a fool is different from somebody who is simple because a fool does know and decides anyways. A simple person doesn't know. And you can say, come on, man, how do you not know that? Well, because they're simple or because I'm simple and I need somebody to put their arm around me and say, stop doing this. And it's funny, my buddy, to this day, he does this. Hey, come over here, <laughs> right? <laughs> it is forever, <laughs> forever marked in his life. The fool is the person who will stand in the middle of the town and just keep doing this. You say, why would they do that? Proverbs 10 and verse 23, doing wrong is like a joke to a fool. But wisdom is pleasure to a man of understanding. I want to say this to you because this is very important. The Bible is clear in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 25 that sin is fun for a little bit. Sin is fun for a little bit. And when someone's acting foolishly and do things that they say, look, I know this is probably the best thing, but I just want to do it because it's, because it's fun, man. Because it makes me feel good. Because I, it, we, we all have things in our life that are this way. But here's the thing that the Bible says in Hebrews 11, verse 25, that sin is fun, but it is fleeting pleasure. In other words, there's a time stamp on it. And eventually that time stamp wears out and eventually means that it's closer than you think it is and more expensive than you thought it would be. And so a fool, the only solution for a fool is pain. Eventually, the fool has to come to a spot where their experiences and the fun that they had cost, uh, uh, the pain costs more than the fun, right? And, and, and you see this. We, we, we see young men and women, they come up, and, and they're simple, right? And, and you just, they just need someone to disciple them. They need someone to love them and teach them and say, don't, don't, don't do this when you travel. to. The, don't spend your money that way. Don't date that person. Don't buy that car on credit. Don't, it just, they just need taught. The fool is the person who dates the person, buys the car, stands in the city, and does this, and has to suffer the consequences. Some of us uh, are still living in the wake of the decisions that we made when we were simple and a little foolish. 
And the best thing that you can do is come alongside somebody that you know doesn't know and say, let me tell you what will happen if you buy that. Let me tell you what will happen. Like, I know right now you're just dating it, but you only get married to folks that you're dating. So let me tell you what will happen when you get married. Let me tell you how that marriage will feel and how it will be uh, not sitting in church, but on Tuesday morning after you fought for the 87th night in a row. So the only solution is, is pain. Here, here's what Proverbs says. Whoever walks with the wise will become what? Will become wise. But watch what's interesting about this. You walk with the wise and you'll become wise, but you walk with fools and you'll suffer harm. God says if you walk with wise people, you'll become like them. He says if you, if you hang out with knuckleheads, you'll just get their consequences. He doesn't say you'll get foolish. He said you'll get beat. You know, it was interesting. I was thinking through my life this week. God saved me when I was 16 years old, and I had started to hang out with some legit knuckleheads around like 50, not, not you know, showing up on the news or anything like that, but just heading down a path. And I, I have a very vivid understanding that as I began to head down that path, God intersected my life and saved me. And, and when God saved me, he not only saved my soul, but he put me in a family called a church. And you need both. Because here's what happened. I, I was heading down a path, a companion of fools, preparing to suffer harm, and God saved me by his grace and put me in a family called a church. And the dudes that I hung out with, I, I hung out with two sets of twins and two other, uh, two other guys. And they, they weren't perfect, and we did silly stuff. We all played ball together and just did dumb teenage stuff, but, but the thing that was interesting is I was the only one that came from a single parent home. And what God did is he spared me the harm that would have come from the fools that I was hanging out with, and he put me in families that was a spiritual family, and he put me in families that weren't my family so that I could see what a good family looked like. And he spared me the stupidity that I not only would have been doing but had started to do when he saved me. This is the reason that we do growth track, y'all. Because some of you are hanging out with knuckleheads. You're a grown adult, and you're still hanging out with fools. And you need God to save you and give you friends to spare you, listen, not from your decisions, from their decisions. And this is what we don't understand. We think, oh, they're just fun, and it, it doesn't do any harm. The Bible says the exact opposite. I remember there was a pastor one day, when, when he would go on missions trips, he would look through who was on the plane from the church, and if he knew that someone was going on the trip that was in an especially rebellious season, he wouldn't get on the plane. He's like, I ain't getting on that plane and going down with those suckers. <laughs> now, you can say that's a little extreme, right? <laughs> but what's, what's the idea? The idea is that the fool surrounds himself and they just harm each other and harm those around them. 64 times the Bible talks about it. The next is what's called the scoffer. It's the scoffer. Another word for it is the mocker. Okay, so they're different from the fool in that not only do they know that they shouldn't be doing it, but they do it and then they are critical of or make fun of those who are trying to do it right. And so Proverbs talks 13 times about this. Proverbs 21 and verse 24, scoffer is the name of the arrogant, haughty man who acts with arrogant pride. Here's another one. Proverbs 9, verses 7 and 8. Whoever, this is a great telltale sign. Whoever corrects the scoffer gets himself abuse. And he who reproves, reproves a wicked man incurs injury. Don't reprove a scoffer because he will hate you. Reprove a wise man and he will love you. The, the easiest way to know if you are in proximity to a scoffer or if you are a scoffer is if when somebody says, you could have done that a different way if you get mad and attack them. Some of you, you're living with this person. And you can't say anything to them unless you say it absolutely perfectly at the right time in the right way when they feel in the mood for it. And the Bible has a term for it. You're a scoffer. You're a scoffer. And here, here's, what, here's what Proverbs says, Proverbs 22 and verse 10. Drive out a scoffer, get away from him, and the strife will go out. And the quarreling and the abuse will cease. Some of you, that should be your social media policy. 
It's amazing to me watching Christians arguing with scoffers on Facebook. Do you know what you need to do? Unfriend. We're done. Your life will be better. They won't even notice. This is the thing that's amazing about a scoffer is that you beat a scoffer and 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 and they just keep coming right back to it and right back to it and right back to it. And then eventually they're not learning. They're mad at circumstances and at God because why do these bad things keep happening? Because you aren't listening. That's why. And because God loves you too much to just let you demolish your and the life of those around you. Here's the solution. This is the biblical solution for a scoffer. Listen, it's not time. It's not pain. It's God. Until God brings that person or you to a place of repentance, you're just going to keep blowing stuff up. You're just going to keep doing damage. You're going to keep doing harm to yourself and to those around you 13 times. The book of Proverbs talks about it. The fourth person that the book of Proverbs talks about 57 times is the wise. It's the wise. And this is, this is who we want to be. This is who I want to be. This is what I want our church to be. And here's the description. Proverbs 9 and verse 9. Give instruction to a wise man and he will be still wiser. Teach a righteous man and he will increase in learning. So here's the thing that's interesting about this. When you study wisdom in the book of Proverbs and in the Bible in general, there's nothing exceptional about the wise person. They don't walk around with a hood over their head, right? They're not Jedis. They're not like, there's nothing. That, you can be young and be wise. You can have low experience. You can have low education. You can have uh, not a lot of people around you. The, the one distinguishing factor of a wise person, it's one word, teachable. A wise person is teachable. Wisdom isn't how much you know. It's your ability to receive teaching wherever you are. And so if you're a high schooler, you can be in pursuit of wisdom. If you're toward the end of your life, you can be in pursuit of wisdom. You can be growing in wisdom. Here's what it says. You instruct a wise man, that brother's going to be wiser. That sister's going to be wiser. Whatever you put in for their good becomes their good. And so I want to give you three things, three easy things in the next few minutes to help us grow in wisdom, to help us grow in wisdom. And understand that when I say grow in wisdom, what I mean is grow in teachability. Grow in teachability. If you'll do these three things, you will grow in teachability and you will, as a result, grow in wisdom. And what I need you to understand is that, that blessing always follows wisdom. Blessing always follows wisdom. And we want the, the blessing from the foolishness. That ain't how it works. We want the blessing from the simpleton. That ain't how it works. We want the blessing while we're self-righteous and critical and mocking and scoffing. That ain't how it works. The Bible is very clear. The book of Proverbs is very clear. You want blessing? Be teachable and be in pursuit of wisdom. And blessing will always follow that. I, I had two men early in my life, in my teens, who came alongside me and literally, I, I mean, made me read the book of Proverbs every single day. And it has it has been one of the greatest blessings and the greatest protectance of my life. Of my life. I, 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 I give them credit for their discipleship of me in many of the blessings that I have experienced and the avoidance of many stupid things that I would have absolutely done without them coming alongside and say, be teachable and invest in wisdom starting at the age of 15. I was reading the book of Proverbs before I was a Christian. That's what I'm trying to say to you. God has a way. So here it is. Are you with me? Yeah. Okay. The first thing, that if you want to grow in wisdom, you need to fear God. You, you need to fear God. The Bible is very clear about this. Proverbs 1 and verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Now, this is an interesting uh, word, fear God, and, and some of us have kind of a ugh feeling around that. And I've read lots of commentaries and listened to lots of pastors talk about this, and they said, this isn't fearing God. 
Can I tell you? Yeah, it is. The word literally means to dread something that's coming. You, you want me to dread God so that I can be wise? We don't have a great English word for this. And so let me do my best to explain it. This is a fear that is not from a sense of lacking safety. You know, sometimes the reason I'm afraid is because I don't, I don't feel safe. And it is a fear that is not connected to they're going to be angry. It's, it's neither of those. It is the equivalent to what happened to me when I was in junior high. I had a, a, a mentor who took me to a basketball game. I grew up in Northeast Ohio. I was watching the Cleveland Cavs, who whew, are not very good right now. <laughs> Thank you, LeBron James, not once but twice. Come on, can I get an amen on that, Stu? <laughs> right, gee whiz. Anyways, I'm going to counseling. Pray for a brother. Um, we go watch the Cavs, and they're, and they're playing the New York Knicks. And I, this was at the time when Patrick Ewing was on the New York Knicks. If you are not a basketball fan, just try to hang with the illustration. Patrick Ewing is seven foot one. He is a gigantic human being. And at the end of the game, we walked down to the tunnel, and my, my, the guy that took me was like, hey, man, why don't you get, try to get uh, some autographs? Which, you know, now that I'm an adult, I'm like, why would I want someone to write their name on a piece of paper? But uh, I'm all about it, right? And, and so I get a couple guys. I don't know who they are. They might have been, you know, ball boys or whatever. But I, and, and here comes Patrick Ewing. Patrick Ewing's walking, and he's, you know, and he stops right in front of me. Now, I'm, I am on an elevated space, and I'm still looking up at Patrick Ewing. And I'm like, uh, uh. He's like, what's up, little man? I'm like, uh, no, nothing. And he just walks by. And my, my guy says to me, why didn't you say anything? Oh, man, I just got nervous, right? Like, I, I just got, I kind of got, oh, I got a little nauseous, right? I don't know if you've ever met somebody that is either physically imposing or has met something, something in your life or, or, or something in history, and something comes over you that is very near, I either in my mind or in actuality, you are superior. And we say, man, they're larger than life. We say, you know, I just got so intimidated, man. Like, I didn't know what to say. I just, it, that's the word. Times infinity. Watch, when people get in the presence of God, uh, 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 <laughs> fall on the ground. N not out of, he's angry. Not out of, I'm not safe out of, you are so infinitely superior to me. I, uh, whoo, 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 whoo. That's the word. And, and here, here's what the Bible says. Until you have that about God, watch, you're going to think you can take care of it and it'll be fine. Fearing God is, you, you, you are... Um, Listen, I know who you are, and, and I know who, how you see me, and I know what you've done in my life, and, and I, I submit to you with absolutely everything. It would be foolish for me to try to do anything on my own. Uh, God, I need you to teach me how, about relationships and about finances and about work, just everything, God, because if this is up to me, I'm pretty sure I'm going to mess this up. That's the word. And, and, and here's what the Bible says. The fear of the Lord is the, it's the first step. Can, can, I, can I tell you in love why it keeps breaking? Can, can I tell you in love why it never gets better? Because you still think you can do it. You still think, I know how to date. <laughs> All these old prudes, they don't know anything. You still think, I can just put this on credit. <laughs> what could go wrong? You still think, I can talk to my wife that way. I can, talk to my, I can, I can parent my kids that way. You, you, you've never come to the spot where there is anyone. And here's what God says. Listen, I love you more than you could imagine. I'm bigger than you could possibly imagine. I'm wiser than you could possibly imagine. 
I don't want you to feel unsafe. I want you to know that I'm not angry. But I also want you to believe that whatever I say is 100% true. It's 100% true. And if you cannot come to rest in that place, do not pass go. If you cannot come to rest, you will always be simple, foolish, or mocking. The beginning of wisdom. And some of you, in the response time, when it comes to your marriage, finances, oh, dating, oh, future, no, oh. And you'll be on to something. You'll be on to something. Number two, number two is listen. Fear God and listen. Proverbs 26 and verse 12. Do you see a man who is wise in his own eyes? You ever seen anyone like that? I have. In the mirror. <laughs> there he is. In all his glory. <laughs> right? There is more hope for a fool than for him. Watch. There is more hope for somebody who knows what to do but refuses to do it because it's fun. And listen, you, we all have been in places like that. We all know people like that. But kind of when you say it out loud in a room, it's like, ugh. Right? God says, if you think you know best, you're worse than that. You're worse than that. Proverbs 10 and verse 8. The wise of heart will receive commandments. I don't like anyone telling me what to do. You're a fool. Right? You're a fool. But... <laughs> <laughs> Somehow you think that I'm a little too direct from time to time, and, and you may be right, you may be right, uh, but, but look at this, but a babbling fool will come to ruin. Watch, here's what God says, a fool can't stop talking long enough for anyone to tell them anything. And the reason is because what I have to say is the most important. The reason I interrupt you is because you are about to say something not as smart as what I was about to say. God says, that's a, <laughs> a babbling blah, 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 blah. fool. Listen, listen. Why? Proverbs says, uh, man, the practicality of this book is incredible. Listeners are humble, number one. Proverbs 11 and verse 2, when pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with the humble is wisdom. Well, what's the posture of humility. Two ears, one mouth. Yeah? Teach me. Come on, I don't know. And, and maybe I think I know, but I, but I actually don't know. Listeners are humble. Number two, listeners want to grow. Proverbs 27 and verse 17, iron sharpens iron, and one man sharpens another. Listen, the only way that happens is if it's teach me. No, you teach me. Teach me. No, you teach me. It's not sharpening. If I'm right, you're right. I'm right, you're right. I'm right. No, that's called an argument. And that's exhausting. <laughs> Friendship, that is, come on, man. You got God's image in you, and you got gifts, and you got perspective. And what do you think about? What do you think about? What do you think I should do? That's a great question. Listeners are humble. Listeners want to grow. Listeners will receive correction. Proverbs 12 and verse 1. Whoever loves discipline... Think about that. Loves knowledge, but he who hates reproof. <laughs> Y'all say it. Stupid. Stupid. You didn't know that was in the Bible, did you? Watch this. Somebody that wants to grow loves it when someone says, man, knock it off. Man, don't do that again. Man, that, no, that's not good enough. They love it. This is the easiest. Listen, you can, you can tell somebody that is wise from a mile away. Because anybody can say anything to them, and they're like, huh, okay, you know what? I'm going to pray about that. I'm going to think about that. I, I'm, I receive that. But, but the person who stiff arms, the person who isolates, the person who thinks they're the smartest, the person who's talk, 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 you can see them a mile away. You can see him a mile away. And so here's what, here's what the Bible says. You want to grow in wisdom? Fear God. Listen. Listen. Number three, learn. Learn. 
Proverbs 1 and verse 5, let the wise hear and increase in learning. And the one who understands, obtain guidance. Proverbs 13, 13 and 14, whoever despises the word, look at, the, look at this, brings destruction on himself. But he who reveres the commandment will be rewarded. The teaching of the wise is a fountain of life that one may turn away from the snares of death. Listen, I, I have had times in my life where people have said stuff to me that the way they said it made me want to punch them in the throat. <laughs> right? Amen. Come on, can I get a good amen on that? Amen. I will beat you. How, how, who do you, are you outside of your mind? And that's the enemy. Because the enemy says, I don't like how they said that to us. Don't they know you got a lot going on? Did you hear that tone? You don't even have a relation. They haven't earned a platform to be able to say that. I mean, I'm talking about your marriage right now. Come on, right? How did, no, the wise says, okay, I received that. Okay, okay, can, I, can you give me some time to think about that? The wise doesn't qualify. Now, they discern, but the wise says, I'm so desperate to grow. I'm so desperate to avoid the snares of death and the destruction that, that will come from me being in charge. That if, that if you feel like God's laid something on your heart to correct me, I'm going to do my very best to receive that so that I can grow. So that I can grow. Here's the process. Learners, they ask. They ask. James 1 and verse 15, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him tell God that, no, ask. Who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to them. Maybe here's another way to say it. Uh, wise people are curious. Hey, Pastor John, how do you, how do, you do... Hey, Pastor John, I got this thing going on. Hey, hey, Pastor Donovan, I, um, such and such happened, and what do you think that I should not? Pastor John, can you believe this happened? Let me tell you something that, no. Two ears, one mouth. What's your perspective? What, what do you think? Pa Pastor Brian, what, th so th this, is, this is the deal, and I'm just giving you a circumstance, and, and then I, uh, can I just tell you what happened, and then I just want to Listen. Wise people are always asking, always learning, always gathering input that they can apply to their life. Learners ask. Number two, learners act. James 1 and verse 22, be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourself. We always attribute that to the Bible, and of course it applies to the Bible, but the context of it is wisdom. And so there's nothing worse than, Pastor Jeff, what do you think I should do? And Pastor Jeff tells me, and I say, that's dumb. What's Pastor Jeff know? That's dumb. What do my parents know? That's dumb. What do my teachers know? That's dumb. What does my coach know? More than you. <laughs> no, seriously. Right? God, God, in his grace, put people around you who are in need of grace. Amen? Amen? But in his sovereignty, he put imperfect people around you that if you will glean what he has taught them, it will both protect and guide you. And so learners, humble people, wise people, they ask, and then the counsel that they get, the wisdom that they get, they go do it. They go do it. Learners sow. Here it is, James 3 and verse 17. But the wisdom that is first from above is first pure. Then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. Here's the phrase. Okay, this is a chance for me to learn X. I don't like what's going on, but this is, this is a chance for me to learn sowing peace. This is a chance for me to learn to be gentle. This is a chance for me to learn to be open to reason. This is a chance for me to learn mercy. And so a wise person is taking a step back and thinking and praying and investing what is good and right and true. Not just reacting, not just I don't like that, not just this, I, me. That's what it sounds like, man. That's what it sounds like in my own life when I just want to do what I want to do, when I want to do it, how I want to do it, and I want you to pay for it. And so there are circumstances that come up See, I don't know how to handle this. I'm going to ask. 
And I'm going to do what I'm told, and I'm going to sow wisdom that is peaceable and pure and gentle and open to reason and full of mercy and impartial and sincere. I'm going to sow that into my family, into my work, into my finances, into my relationships, into my future. I'm going to sow it in. And learners, they reap. James 3 and verse 18, and a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Here's the thing. You invest wisdom into your life, and it will bear fruit. You invest foolishness into your life, and it will bear fruit. The book of Proverbs takes nine chapters to say, let me tell you why wisdom is important. And then from chapter 10 to chapter 31, it says, here's wisdom, here's wisdom, here's wisdom, here's wisdom, here's wisdom. And God says, if you're going to get anything, get this. If you're going to get anything, get fear God. Listen. Listen to God. Listen to those around you. Learn, act, sow, and it will protect you and bless you and transform you, and God will get the glory, and we will be able to rejoice. Do you receive this today? We hope that you enjoyed the service. If you need prayer for any area of your life or just need someone to talk to, send us an email to amen at visitgraceway.org. If you live in the Kansas City area, we'd love to have you worship with us. You can let us know you're coming by going to visitgraceway.org, and we'll have a member of our dream team waiting to make your experience great.